this is Billy Core from the Carolina Circle Mall Wiki with today's edition of A Nostalgic Christmas. Um, today is Monday, December the 22nd of 2014, and um, I apologize for not doing um, a nostalgic Christmas video for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday, I had to deal with a, a little bit of a personal emergency, and um, Saturday and Sunday, I was just real busy and real tired, so I just couldn't work it out to make a video, but I'm back today, and we are going to be making a video that's been highly requested for the past few weeks. Um, this is what I bought with my birthday money this year. This is my Compact Desk Pro EN, um, and specs is a it has a one gigahertz Pentium 3, 128 megabytes of memory an 80 gigabyte hard drive added by me and a um, floppy drive and DVD-ROM slash CD-RW drive which I added today thanks very much to Value Village for having a good product at a good price at, at the right time and um, we're really not going to re be focusing on the hardware aspect of this um, computer today um, we're going to be more focusing on the software um, particularly um, Windows 98 because Windows 98 um, is an operating system I really don't discuss much on this channel as you know my favorite nostalgic version of Windows is um, Windows 95 but Windows 98 is also a really really fun um, retro operating system to play with it's beloved by many many people and including um, someone I have on Skype with me um, Video Sun Frontiers, aka Jay Wakefield. Hey everyone. Um, sorry, I can hear myself. <laughs> Ooh, um, let me see if I can fix it. Okay, how's that? Echo. Right, you can cut that one out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Okay. Uh, three, two, one, and hello, everyone. Um. It's uh, good to be here with uh, Road Geek on his channel doing um, a video on uh, a machine that I have uh, felt that Billy needed in his collection for a good long while. Um, that's the Compact Desk Pro. And Windows 98. Um, that was on my first. That was on my first personal computer. I mean, we had the Compact Presario 2240, which of course was. A Windows 95 machine, just barely, but it was. <laughs> um, and then I got my my first machine, which was the 2001 custom built 633 megahertz Celadon. Um, Great computer. Uh, yeah, not bad actually. Uh, 128 megs of RAM, and um, yeah, it's um, so. Before we do actually delve into the software, Billy, I was wondering if you could um, kind of tell everyone the spe specifications of the machine that you're working with. Uh, I actually did a minute ago. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, that's okay. <laughs> it's a Pentium 3, 1 gigahertz. Um, yeah, 80 gig drive, 128 megs of RAM. Mm -hmm. That's the basics. And, yeah, and I had, um, I had a similar machine, actually. I had the larger version of that machine. Yeah, I went with the smaller because, um, well, for one thing, um, space, and this thing was dirt cheap. I got it for only $30. $30, folks, off of eBay. These things usually go for over $100. I got it for $30 just, just because it didn't have a hard drive or memory. <laughs> I mean, that that is fantastic. I mean, I'm not even going to, I mean, I wouldn't even try and argue with that. It's just absolutely brilliant. That's not what it is. Oh, I couldn't say no. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't have let you. Yeah, yeah. He was part of the reason why I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it is. It's quite funny, but uh, it's, it's a good thing that, um, it's a good thing, though, that uh, you've... Uh, sorry. It's a good thing that you finally got yourself a Desk Pro EN. 
you know, I'm, I'm really glad about that because I, I think, um, you know, I, th I think it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's a compact and they're brilliant. They make brilliant Windows 98 machines. Yes, yeah, best Windows 98 machine I've ever had. Okay. All right, I guess um, I better pause the video so I can set this up on what's left of my tripod, and um, we will be right back. Okay, as long as I don't touch the camera and or tripod during the making of this video, we should most likely be able to avoid any kind of um, horrible disaster occurring. So, um, let me turn these speakers on. Let's uh, go on ahead and fire it up. Whoa! There's my speaker pop there. All right. I'm firing my laser. <laughs> All right, Microsoft Windows 98. As you can see on there, I got good old um, Plus for 98 installed. If yeah, whenever whenever I run Windows 98, it it doesn't feel right without Plus. <laughs> It means you don't have the compact splash screen. Yeah, good point. <laughs> I always keep that saved so you know when I install Plus, I can I can copy the correct logo.sys back over it, and I do that with Windows 95 ones as well. So yeah, although an interesting thing to note about my perception is that it doesn't have the Utopia sign scheme. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, w um, since we're on the subject of Windows 98, our first 98 machine, which was that HP we got back in 1999, the computer was a pile of crap, but um, one thing I do remember from it was uh, it you it came preloaded um, with the, from the OEM installation with the Utopia sound scheme. So um, I always, so thanks to that, I always associate Windows 98 with the Utopia theme, um, so that's what I always use on it. <laughs> oh, that's, so that's reason to pick, uh, come about with money for, uh, you know, for one, that one of the settings is being changed, that can be changed on absolutely any Windows 98 installation provided you've installed the sound pack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't installed the sound pack, you can easily install that as well. I know. <laughs> And um, here's the desktop. I got. Yeah, I've been um, installing a. I've had this installation for about three weeks now, but I um, installed a few more things on it today. And um, here you go, Jay. Let me position the webcam so you can see the desktop. Um, that's. Ah. Yep. CPQ stars background. Yep. I had to use it. Yep. Uh, straight from the Presario. <sighs> Actually, um, yep. uh, Halstead got me that background initially, front of the Presario back, so, um... Oh, yeah, I remember that, when that happened. Let me um, turn my monitor back on. actually got it from the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the Heads Presario 12 front of the Star CD. Oh, yeah, that, that one's, uh, I think a laptop. It is. I, I actually found one on eBay, um, uh, uh. earlier this year. Can I actually watch a video of it on my channel? Sorry for plugging, but yeah. Oh, that's okay. All right, that's, that's the best I, I can position my webcam for you can so you can see it, um, Jay. But there you go. Yep. But uh. Big black mouse pointer, so. Yeah, it really is Jay approved. Uh, my my eyes are okay, but I just prefer using this for some reason. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, take a look at the start menu. Right, let's go to programs. We've got um, Toonland from Seventh Level, a game I picked up last week at um, Value Village actually. Um, Pong um, from Atari, um, Pong the Next Level actually from 1999. It's a 3D version of, of Pong. Best of Entertainment Pack. Go ahead, Jay. Yep, I remember playing something like that on the PlayStation One. Okay, um, best of entertainment, uh, the playroom, the uh, drivers for the sound card on here, um, which I forgot to mention, the sound card on here I added myself. It does have bu a built-in sound card, but I've never used it on here. Instead, um, I bought a separate sound card for it, a Sound Blaster 128, a 
great, great, great sound card, I have to admit. Mm. And we will do a canyon test in a little, in, in a little bit. Um, I installed this today when I got the new optical optical drive um, power DVD, I believe version five point something. Um, Roller Coaster Tycoon and Tonka Construction Two. Um, the the Packard Bell Kids story games with the Hi there, kid. My first encyclopedia, Lego Island, Magic Disc, which I installed today. I actually discovered this. It's this is a great application I discovered to have on a um, Windows 98 machine like this. Um, basically, um, it lets you mount ISO CD-ROM images in Windows 98. It's perfect. It, it runs perfectly. <laughs> It's a great little program to have. So Google uh, Magic Disk um, and look for the version for um, Windows 98, Windows ME, and 2000. Mm. And that that is quite good actually because I know you say you like to carry games around with you, um, you know, on laptops, uh, something like. Um, you know, like yeah, the humongous entertainment stuff, the living books, and that kind of stuff. So you could actually just kind of carry the ISO around with you and still get CD audio. Like, uh, just Grandma and me, I believe, has a CD audio track. Yeah, it doesn't really use much of it, but it is there. And, and we got... So, go ahead. I think there's games like um, The Incredible Machine actually has two soundtracks, and that's... I, I always find that kind of interesting. I mean, it's, it's obviously Sierra using CD-ROM technology to the fullest. Yeah, the Incredible Machine version three, my uh, one of my childhood favorites. Um, actually, um, it's it's full of amazing CD audio songs that I've loved since I was about six years old, and I always will. Yeah. And when you don't use the and when you don't use the CD, it'll play the the MIDI equivalents of that, which is also pretty cool. Hmm. See, I mean, I I just find that that quite odd. I mean, it's like, why... I mean, it's cool and everything, but financially viabil financial viability, why two soundtracks, you know? I know. Um, but, yeah, it's um, it's one of those. It's, it's quite interesting to note, but, I mean, if you have uh, Magic ISO, uh, yeah, Magic ISO, then you can obviously just, you know, take the Incredible machine CD ROM with you as an ISO file. Mm -hmm. It does, it does kind of mean that you're not having to carry a pile of CDs around with you. So um, you know, just as long as you've got a big enough hard drive or even uh, an external, not that I would uh, recommend um, trying to run things from an external hard drive over USB 1.1. But um, as long as you've got a big enough drive you have to put the CD images on. Because if you've got audio tracks, then obviously that's actually going to take up the full amount of space. Yep. And um, but, this um, this Desk Pro, I put an 80 gig hard, 80 gigabyte hard drive in it, so I should be good for the, to go with that. <laughs> okay. I think you'd be all right. All right, and I mean, we go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a good. It's well for one thing. A reason I went with 80 gigabytes was because that was the only spare. Um, IDE hard drive I had that would work with a machine like this that would be suitable. Yeah. Alright, and um, we got the Maxis um, group with um, Full Tilt Pinball, SimCity 2000, SimCity Classic for Windows, um, and Streets of SimCity. And um, one of my favorites, um, well, not which is, um, sad, I'm sad to say, is not a favorite of many people, Microsoft Bob. <laughs> in Carta 2002, um, Flight Simulator 98, Return of Arcade Anniversary, Pinball Arcade, Revenge of Arcade, and Monster Truck Madness, um, which I need to do a video about sometime. Uh, plus for Windows 98, which we mentioned earlier. And um, we'll take a look at this in a minute, make it e make this video even more J-approved. Um, 
Work Suite 2002. It's <laughs> <laughs> definitely getting pretty. Um, the Gus games, including Let's All Go to the Carnival. <laughs> yeah, it's got brilliant. The Gus games do have brilliant soundtracks right enough. Uh, Norton Utilities 2001. Pa Power ISO, um, which I originally installed for the for virtual drives, but that does not work with Windows 98. But I went on ahead and kept it on there anyway. What about sorry, what, was, what program was that? Power ISO. I was I installed it for virtual drives on here, but it that that part's not compatible with 98. But I kept it on here anyway. Hang on, so let me get this straight. Would you not need a virtual drive to mount an ISO file? Yeah. So, hang on, is it Power ISO that you installed? Yes. Alright, ah, okay. Got QuickTime version 5, Roxio Easy CD Creator 5 Platinum. Yep, I used that this too. Let's try that again, Billy. I used that in the 2001 custom build. Yeah, back 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 in the day, only I only had basic, and which in fact, version five basic is what came on my uh, Dimension 2350. Mhm. Mm um, Sonic 3D Blast from Sega. Um, 3D Ultra Mini Golf, and uh, as we were discussing earlier, the Incredible Machine. Uh, Win Image, latest version, um, no, not the latest version, um, WinRAR, um, the, um, version for 98, and, um, Office, um, XP, and that's pretty much it, let's, uh, I guess first thing we'll take a look at is Work Suite 2002, mm -hmm. apparently I haven't opened it up yet because it's wants, want me to accept the license agreement, so I agree, I definitely read that. I'll register later, um, which translates into I'll, I'll register over my dead body. And we get that piece of junk again up the top of the screen. <laughs> the portfolio. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, which will now um, start up every time I start Windows. Don't show me this again. No, I don't want it to start every time Windows starts. Oh, Billy, it just wants to be loved, so it does. <laughs> uh, e even back in the early 2000s. Out at Christmas time, man. It's no right. Even in the early 2000s, I, that thing annoyed me. <laughs> but here we are at the works task launcher for... Um, I'm not sure... Uh, let's see here. Um, it's Microsoft version. Um, Microsoft Works version 6.0. Yeah. So it's this slightly basic version of. Um, it's, it's a slightly facelifted version of uh, version 6.0 that came with Work Suite 2001. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I would have gone with 2000 or 2001, but on here, but. 2002 was just more accessible for me <laughs> I know, I know. to obtain, but okay, let's uh, go to programs, we'll, uh... I guess it's on a DVD, which, uh... Huh. For whatever reason, um... Word is not anywhere on here. This is... This is Jay Wakefield reporting from the National. There was a mix-up today in North Carolina when it seemed that uh, YouTube user Billy Corr, aka Road Geek, forgot to install the Works Suite Wired Add-in. He reckons he actually installed it, but when he came to uh, look at Works Suite 2002 on his computer, it actually transpired that uh, Wired Add had indeed not been installed. We now go over to our correspondent in North Carolina for more details. Well, uh, I was just there. Uh, well, I was just trying to fly myself a plane and uh, over Pilot Mountain, and uh, well, I couldn't. I found that Billy had not installed the word added, and 
suddenly I started uh, experiencing <laughs> some heavy turbulence, and I had to, I'd had to set her down in Winston Salem. Uh, I really didn't want to set it down there, so, uh, so I was not too happy. Of course, tomorrow I'll have to go back, retrieve the plane, and I probably have a lot of explaining to do to, um, you know, why the plane is uh, stuck in downtown Winston. <laughs> And that is pretty accurate because I, I thought I installed the the word add-in, but um, either I didn't or something went um, rather um, disastrous. But oh well, I'll I'll worry about that later. Um, let's um, take a look at a program. Um, Work Suite 2002 actually came with um, my dad's old Dell Inspiron 2650 that he got at the end of 2002, and it was our first computer that had Windows XP on it so I used um, this uh, I used Work Suite 2002 from time to time on there including one of the programs that came with it that we'll look at now um, Picture It Photo 2002 I think that is oh dear <laughs> I've never seen it do that before what? <laughs> I have to draw the screen down the way <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess if I had this on <laughs> What the heck? Yeah, sweet Yeah, I I really don't remember this from the early two thousands when I was using this, but Okay. See I actually do. I mean that's perfectly appropriate for Christmas time because you can use it to make greeting cards. I think the idea was uh, Microsoft Picture was um, actually it was a replacement for the old Microsoft greeting, and I think what it was intended as was, of course, digital cameras really started coming into their own in the early two thousands. Microsoft really wanted to capitalise on that, so from Work Suite two thousand one onwards, you got Picture at Photo. Um, Later versions, you'd get Picture at Express. But this was basically exactly like Microsoft Greetings, except it was more centered around you using digital photos. Now, if you didn't have a digital camera, that didn't necessarily matter. Because if you had a scanner, you could take your 35mm shots, mm -hmm. scan them in, um, in all their grainy, wonderful glory, and uh, use, use them instead and print them out on your equally grainy printer. Um, of course, I use Picture It Photo quite often, actually, to, to make Christmas cards. In fact, I did use that a lot. In fact, I, I always used it. <laughs> and I think I may have just made the rather unwise decision to attempt to open a um, 16 megapixel um, photo from the year 2013 on WorkSuite 2002, and it seems to have brought the computer to a standstill. <laughs> I just don't need that. Yeah, let's see if we can kill the task here. Oh no, it's doing something. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's closing. <laughs> so let's, let's try this again with a more appropriate image that won't make itself um, cave in on itself, that's... <laughs> yeah. Talking about uh, that, that professionalism you prepared beforehand for your videos, it's like, yeah, look at this absolutely flawless de demonstration of Work Suite 2002. First why dad and goes messing and now that's, oh dear. Yeah, cause, um, a lot of... Up, sad Christmas. Yeah, cause... Bastard. Go away, welcome, movie! Yeah, that's something I don't like, right? <laughs> Two thousand two, the bloody welcome movie. Although Petro Photo two thousand one does have a very ninety sounding kind of dance tune. I know, and um, oh wow, you can even get pictures from MSN photos. <laughs> there you go. All right, now let's try to open a more um, appropriate photo. Let's just open up the regular Carolina Circle Mall logo. It, it, it's a it's a bump file, so it shouldn't kill it. Ah, oh, there we go. We can actually do stuff now. So uh, mm -hmm. now JPEGs do work. If you know what you're doing. 
Yeah, if you're not trying to load a JPEG from the year 2013. <laughs> I guess it helps me that I have my original digital camera still. Yeah. So, I mean, I could, I could just... I should, actually. I should. Watch out for picture photo demonstration coming soon to the video song from the air right enough. <laughs> it would be pr pretty neat to see, actually. Uh... Yeah, I'll have to do it. Yeah, just... See what I can fill up. Now, I do believe there are some wizards that actually enable you to make a greeting card. Obviously, you can do that with photos, like, you know, kind of just edit, um, like that, like Billy's doing with the vertical text and shadows and what have you. Um, but from the main screen, I believe you can actually start, um, in fact, I know you can, because I've done it. You can actually start a wizard that will enable you to create greeting cards, banners, flyers, um, invites, um, you know, all, all from within Microsoft Picture Photo. Like I said, it's, it's designed really as, um, it's designed really to kind of take, make the most of your digital photographs, um, and enable you to, you know, do stuff with them. And I, I really rather like that. Trouble is, I don't think such a program exists anymore because I mean, people just don't want to do these things at home with their own computer. They don't. I mean, I think back in the day, you, you kind of still had bragging rights. Like, you know, you, you bought yourself a computer, it cost you a lot of money, so damn it, you're going to use it. Yeah. To the fullest extent possible. And you've lost your Carolina Circle knowledge, yes. Yeah. Yes, because I added a border to it, and I tried to delete the border, but the border is a is a permanent fixture to it now. So, darn it! But oh well, it's just for demonstration purposes only. Mhm. Mm so as I was saying, I think these programs have been obviously superseded by greeting card services like Moonpeg.com, which is available in the U.S. Um, I know that because I've sent cards over overseas. <clears throat> yeah, and I've, I've gotten one of those cards from you. Mm -hmm. Moonpeg do it, Hallmark do it, although Hallmark is naturally speaking, you know, naturally, because it's Hallmark, very expensive. They um, do have a good product, though. Pardon? They do, they do make a good product, though. What? A, a greeting card? Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I mean, you think of greeting cards, you think of Hallmark. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of their thing. <laughs> I think Hallmark did actually release a greeting card maker for the PC back in the 90s. And you know, um, what's sad here is that what I've just done here um, with the Carolina Circle Mall, Mall logo um, is... This was actually rather cruel, the Carolina Circle Mall, because you see... This is Picture It Photo 2002. Carolina Circle Mall closed in 2002. <laughs> Way to rub it in, Billy. Way to rub it in. Join us next week when we'll uh, be uh, reviewing Microsoft Greetings Workshop as part of uh, the Home Essentials 97 pack. Yeah. I think it came with that. I can't even mind, actually. Did it or didn't it? Uh, okay. And since we couldn't access it from uh, Work Suite, we'll go ahead and open up Word 2002. This was the um, the first real version of Word that I ever really used, um, or that I really got familiar with. That's quite interesting because the first version of Word I got familiar with was Word 6. Yeah, I didn't use Word 6 until the late 2000s, if that mm. early enough. See, whereas for me it was a proper nostalgia trip because I was using it in 1997 on certain school computers. Yeah. I, I like using Word and uh, Works for that matter. I like it. One word. And, but I think, um. And one of these days I had to write something serious in these um, word demonstrations. I figured, why not now? 
Can you read it, Jay? Yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I can. There we go. I might as well save it. Uh. For those of you who um, grew up in the like very late 90s and early 2000s, um, I wasn't one of them. Um, I, as you know, I really don't have any nostalgia for that era, but I do like playing with Windows 98. Um, I hope that this is um, bring out, bringing back some fond memories for those who do have nostalgia for that era. So I hope I'm uh, doing a good community service for you folks. <laughs> well, certainly for me, because like I said, I mean, I did... I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I did use Office 2002, Office XP. Yeah, me too. Um, I used WorkSuite 2002, but I used them. I think the only thing that I didn't really use out of it was Picture as uh, Autobook. Because, obviously, I wasn't going anywhere at the time, so I didn't need it. But, I did use... Picture, I did use Picture at Photo, I used Encarta, I did use Money to some extent as well. Never every, every, used everyone use money, uh, uses Money, um, you have to have money to live. Oh, uh, Microsoft Money, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the alternative reading material if you don't fancy the Zeitgeist addendum. <laughs> Um, All right, now we're gonna, as is traditional in these videos, we're gonna play a game. Um, this is a game that's designed for Windows 95, but on the com Windows 95 computers I have, which are Packard Bells, this game's a little too, um, uh, how do I put it? A little too powerful for a Packard Bell. So this is a much more appropriate computer to do this with. So, and it's also a good way to break in my new optical drive on the Desk Pro. It should um, pop up in a second with the auto run. This, this port is actually uh, made by Microsoft, so we'll see it in a second. I don't want to give it away just yet. Party time! That's right, folks. Gex. <laughs> We've got Gex on the computer. Um, I didn't really play much of this of this version of Gex, the um, the first one, but but um, Gex entered the get go on Nintendo 64. That's one of my all time favorite games on the Nintendo 64. Which I speaking of the Nintendo 64, I intend for that to be tomorrow's nostalgic Christmas video. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and install Gex. I don't really need DirectX 2. I've already got 9 on here. Who here remembers that Microsoft logo? Let's skip through these um, screens. Let's see if there's a way I can. Uh, configure it so I can use my uh, Gravis Gamepad Pro and if um, a little bit of an inside joke here so my apologies if you don't get this uh, if you eat at Hobo if you eat at Hobo's for Gravis then technically this gamepad is made by Gravis yeah. <laughs> I'm sure um, s some people especially um, if you're Chris Master 1 will um, get that uh, yeah, I was about to say, that is definitely a Crestmaster one approved joke right now. Yeah. And it seems like the uh, controller's already ready to go. Let's get it on! Uh, not with a gecko. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, um... This is one of those typical games from the... <laughs> 90s that that does not take itself seriously, but if you know me, it really does because um. Let's get back to the mystery man. 
I love I, I I love good old comedy and and um, I would really enjoy this game if I could figure out how to how these controls work. All right, I, I think that did something. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Ooh, trick or treat. Yeah, Jack's always got that. Yeah, I noticed that. I played Gat 3D um, and the Gackle. Um, love that game. On the PlayStation 1, I have a demo of that, and I used to love playing that, so, yeah, yeah. I, I quite, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing Gat 3D on, on uh, one of my 98 boxes. Yeah, and um, as you can tell, that unlike the other Gex games, this first Gex game is actually uh, two-dimensional. Yeah, it's a side scroller. Yeah, I, I like it. Oh yeah, forget you can climb up, climb up uh, vertical surfaces, but again, I guess you'd expect that, you know, as a as a tile so yeah. So yeah, you can't even do that. And... Yeah, yeah. And you're technically not a true reptile. Still getting used to these controls, folks. <laughs> Bear with me. Ah, I mean, so many like platforms and what have you the PS1. I mean, what I really need to do is like you know try and find all the demos that I have. And I'm dead. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm just trying to get used to these controls. I'm used to playing this with a joystick, but I don't have room for one over here, so I'm having to use a gamepad. Okay. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get a somewhat further. I always love the the random little um, quips Gex will make during the game. Just with the yeah, <laughs> I will admit though, um, Earthworm Jim, I think is actually just a little bit easier. At least um, the compared to the first Gex game. Get away from that guillotine. That's right. Yeah. Oh, is this the French Revolution? <laughs> Say you want a revolution, well... I like the revolution, that's what's me to cry about now. Yeah. Less of the guillotine. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, finally. Oh, there's a little bonus section here of this level. It kind of reminds, it kind of reminds me of uh, the PlayStation One version of a Bug's Life. You know, he, he was quite often quipping. Yeah. <laughs> And I actually played this first version of Gex, um, not on the PC though, I actually played the um, Sega Saturn port of it back in, I think, 1997. So, ask the question, how do the two compare? Of course, I'm a hardcore PC gamer out here. No, I do, you know, I mean, I do have consoles when they need it, you know, I mean, I'm not averse to yeah, same here. consoles, obviously, you know, I, I do have them, but, um, of course you know, I... if I can play it on the PC, I will. Mm -hmm. So, how do the two parts stack up? I really can't say because I haven't played the Sega Saturn version since 1997, I really don't remember. <laughs> uh -huh. So, at this point, folks, I can't even tell you to, you know, I can't even... I just say one way or the other way you need to go out, go out buy a Sega Saturn right now uh, so you can play Gex um, or whether you need to go out and buy a retro PC to play this game. Yeah. I mean, I would probably say buy a retro PC on you like, you know. If you, yeah, they're know, always great to have. Game. It's always a good thing to have. Um, but I've never used the Sega Saturn, so I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have say, you know, 
one way or the other. I mean, they do seem like good systems, but unfortunately, they weren't so popular. You know, and it's and, and neither was the Dreamcast. But it's it's not sad actually that we can pass through the Mega Drive Sega. We completely lost it. Now that it's that type of development, it's, um, it kind of speaks volumes. Now that Sonic is. Um, a, a, a character on Super Smash Brothers, which is basically, uh, you know, where all the Nintendo characters come to play. All right, now, I don't think we, we, we got through that level, but I don't think we beat it because we didn't find the remote control, but, oh, well, that kind of gives you the an overall feel of the uh, game. Well, it looks like you're watching Mary Poppins for the uh, 25th Christmas in a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put this game back. Might, might try one more game in. But I'm not going to show it in this video, but... And I just hit the tripod and... Okay, we're good. Thank goodness. Um, For the... Uh, believe it or not, this computer actually can play a, a few um, low-powered DOS games. One of them being Skyroad's Christmas Special with music. However, with the um, Sound Blaster 128, the music sounds completely different. Uh, okay, let's find something else to play. Uh, Skyroad's Christmas Special is not something I want to be reviewing. Size Christmas! Uh, You're never meant to win that game. It's cruel. It's not I know. meant to be won. You're, you're supposed to sit in front of your computer greeting, wondering about the, the purpose of life, you know, is it worth it? Is life the name? I just, I, I don't even know all these questions that I'm answering since I played Skyro's Christmas special. Which plays perfectly fine on the Perserio 2240, by the way, but, um... Yeah, um... I do have to admit that about that game, it has some of the most amazing music for a game. And excuse me, I need to go to the room and get a and find a game to uh, play. And of course, it plays fine on the 50, Armada 1590DT as well. Yeah. <laughs> and just about any uh, mid 90s Packard Bell, it'll work. So if anyone has a compact. 1500 series with an active matrix display that they would like to donate to Billy Carr. You know, I've been trying to get one for the past year and it's just not happened. <laughs> yeah, I, that 1590 um, Armada is my dream uh, 90s laptop. And by the way, this is what we're going to be playing now. Um, we mentioned this a while ago Pong, the next level. I don't have much experience with this game because I've only had it a week and this is only the second time I've ever played it, so we'll see what happens. I think it's kind of one of those games that kind of, you know, came out. It's one of the last games, well, actually, I don't think it really was one of the last, last games to come out in the PS1, but it was, it was kind of one of those, you know, games that came from like 99, 2000 that's just completely forgettable. Right? <coughs> mm-hmm. You know, it does seem quite fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got a little load screen with the Atari logo. Very good graphics in this game for a Pong game. <laughs> Alright, gotta use the enter key to select. Not a bad game for 80 cents at Value Village. So it looks like we'll be playing Penguin Pong. And I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here. A Christmas rant, um, if you may. What do penguins have to do with Christmas? I know it has to do with being the cold and wintry stuff, but... If you're trying to be like, uh, uh, do all the Santa Claus stuff, Penguins aren't at the North Pole. They're at the South Pole. It's, it's like Pengu. It's, yeah. It's a, Pengu is Russian, of course, there's bits of Russia that are in the Arctic Circle, right enough. You know, but... didn't even exist in real life. I know. It's on the South Pole. 
Yeah, I've got one message for you. No, no. <laughs> oh. As you can see, um, unlike um, standard Pong that you would um, play like on an Atari 2600 or on a Pong console from the 70s, this version of Pong is much more fast-paced and, and incredibly difficult. <laughs> but for one thing, you get multiple um, Pong balls that you have to play with here. And I am doing horribly. So you, it's a computer playing as the right paddle? Yes. Alright, that's good. And I'm controlling it with the um, arrow keys on the keyboard. I wonder if you could get a roll through. Try that again, I wonder if you could get a... Um, I wonder if you could get a rotary, uh, a rotary dial. Um, you? Oh, it, it just came up in big red letters telling me that I lost. <laughs> it was kind of like that Asus recovery CD that I tried last year that came out with a big dialogue box that said ERROR in letters that were as tall as the screen. Yeah, yeah it's one of those things that um, kind of lets you know that you failed um, and I think this is actually one of those games where um, you have to unlock other levels. So um, until um, until I can, I'm stuck with the penguins. Mm. And I don't know what I just did there. I hit the space bar. See the the thing about Pong is. You know, in the 70s, they were actually really quite, the TV stations were actually really quite scared that the console, that uh, games consoles would actually, and this was the 70s, they were scared that games consoles would actually stop people actually wanting to watch a television. Yeah. So, <laughs> certainly in the UK, um, Bruce Forsyth did actually, um, did a part of his Saturday night show. Um, it was a segment called TV Tennis, and basically it was where the uh, contestants actually played the horn. <laughs> which I thought was quite clever, actually. Alright, now we're back in Windows. We're going to do one more thing before we call this a video. we got to do a canyon test because, well, i got to show off how great the, the MIDI sounds on here. Now, I absolutely adore FM Synthesis. <laughs> That will always be the best kind of MIDI in the world. Like what you would find on a Packard Bell sound card or a Sound Blaster 16. But this is this software wavetable on the Sound Blaster 128 is really, really good in its own special way. So Yeah, creative cards, beautiful thing. So, um, I'm going to do a twist on um, a catchphrase from U YouTube user UXW Bill. Canyon test! <laughs> if media player will load. There we go. Really, really nice. Cut to the chase here.
flip mode, 98 style. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and actually, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually play a Christmas carol on here. I'm actually going to play um, the same MIDI file that you hear at the beginning of my nostalgic Christmas videos, um, which is FM synthesis, but I'm going to play this now on a uh, Sound Blaster 16. So, um, here we well, go. We well, we're very much aware that this is wavetable synthesis. You need not comment on it. Yeah, because <laughs> like I said, um, in its own special way, this is still pretty good. I'm only kidding on that. It's just another XW ballot. Yeah. Enough of that, but um, yeah, that's uh, you know, I hate to do this, folks, but this video's gone on long enough. Um, this uh, will be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let's uh, Jay, um, do you have any final thoughts since you're the compact expert? Go <laughs> <laughs> well, that far, but um, you've got an absolutely amazing system there, brilliant for Windows 98 games. 95 games, even a couple of DOS games, as we've just discovered. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we're discussing it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> discovered anything, actually, but um, it really is, you know, and I hope you hold on to this, because it's... Um, I'm going to try to. I mean, the good thing, it's got NVIDIA graphics, it's a business class machine, I mean, these things just run and run and run and run. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then they run some more. Yeah. <laughs> And I do believe there's ID to SATA card, so, you know, people actually just kind of put a regular SSD in there. <laughs> and now that would be interesting. Uh, just kind of, you know, throw in a Samsung 840 Pro or something, 120 gigs, yeah, that would yeah. do it. Just bung it in there. And, um, and just to let you guys know, if you're wondering, I'm sure there's a lot of people wondering this, why... Um, I went with um, Windows 98 for this machine instead of Windows 2000, which this computer actually comes with a COA for. Well, game compatibility. Exactly. Um, games um, that I play just seem to perform a little bit better on um, Windows 98 than it does on Windows 2000, for one thing. Um, Earthworm Jim just does not run on anything NT based, and a few other games just are happier with Windows 98 and then to and for one another simple reason is I just have no use for um when Windows 2000 on here so um Windows Ooh. 98 it is and you know some machines you know you put Windows Windows 98 on them and they become kind of character film not not in a bad way not in a like oh it crashes it's got character that way I mean it yeah. just I don't know it just kind of feels more like a machine that you enjoy you know, exactly. It has more like personality. It. And it's a... Uh, and, pl and plus, as to put it simply, in the words of Lazy Game Reviews, um, my nostalgia is better than your logic! <laughs> <laughs> I had some good times with Windows 98. Yeah, me too. Um, like I've said before, um, when Windows 98 was still current, I really did not have any good experiences with it. It's, I don't blame the operating system. I just blame the computers I had to use at the time. I just um, did not have um, acceptable computers back then, but now I do. Um, and so I, now I can finally appreciate Windows 98 a little bit more than I did um, in the early 2000s when I was about 10, 11 years old. Yeah. So, was, go ahead. I was a teenager, you know, using Windows 98. Um, 98 came out when I was 10, and 98 Second Edition came out a year later, and, um, you know, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, I mean, I do, I don't get me wrong, guys, I do appreciate Windows 2000 for what it is as well, you know. So well, same here. Stability is uh, paramount, you know, and some games on certain machines will actually work on Windows 2000 better than they will on Windows 98. Um, but at the same time, you know, on a desktop, 
I will go for Windows 98, so like now Dell Dimension 4100. That comes with the Windows Millennium COA, but um, I have, uh, you know, I've gone with Windows 98, and I couldn't be happier with it. Yeah, and um, what I like about Windows 98 compared to 2000, again, nothing against 2000, great operating system, but 90, Windows 98, it's a fun operating system. It's just fun. <laughs> it is. Mm. You know, you've got proper DOS mode as well, you know? It's, yeah. It's, it's fun. And it's, it's just one of those systems that you can really get to know properly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like... Windows 98 is kind of like an older car, you know? Not not too old. I'm, I'm not talking like, you know, 50s. I'm, I think I'm talking probably, you know, like late my, 80s, early 90s. Yeah, kind of, maybe kind of like my uh, 95 Accord. Something like that, you know? It's, mm -hmm. it's not the sort of car that kind of... You actually still have to do mechanical... You know, if you want to tune it up, you do it mechanically. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas Windows 2000 is more like a car that you, uh, you know, you tune it up using a laptop. Exactly. <laughs> and Windows, Windows, um, MS-DOS is kind of like a, a 60s car, you know, everything's just analog and mechanical. Not that DOS is analog, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. 95 is kind of more like a, you know, an 80s car. I think 98 is like, kind of like a 90s car. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's modern enough, but... You know, it's it's kind of still fun. You could still do stuff to it. Yep. I mean, any mechanics out there want to disagree with me? You know, I'm I'm not a mechanic. <laughs> um, I'm sorry to say this, um, but I'm not a mechanic. But I mean, that's that's how I see it. You know, if we're going to go for cars. Yeah. You know, analogy. Whereas, you know, Windows 2000 is like you know a 2000s car. It's reliable. You know, it's pretty stable, got all the mod cons. But you can't do anything without the bloody en engine management like coming on on the lemon dashboard. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, you um you fed the cat half an hour later than you normally feed the cat? That's an engine management. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to take it to the blooming dealers for some greasy haired kid with a laptop to go Yeah, you know, kinda of put put the engine management light out and then and then be like yeah, that'd be like 90 quid, please. It's like, screw you, that's the last time I go to a certified Volvo dealer. <laughs> I am not a car. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I, I don't know why I did that. I just want to have a little fun. <laughs> Oh, James Cravens, right. I guess we'll just end this video before it descends into total anarchy. Yeah. For now, um, this is Billy Core shutting down this compact and signing off. <laughs> and we'll probably get a loud pop in a second. Yeah. <laughs> I love that on old computers. You used to do, you know, you used to switch it on it and you used to go, <laughs> with the speakers. <laughs> you know, back when they actually gave you good speakers to go with your computer. I know. <laughs> and a good sound like, guard. It's like, here's a, here's a couple of yogurt pots on a string. Maybe they'll work. <laughs> it's like, actually, no, that's, uh, that's per telephone. <laughs> there, you see, it's a modem. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... From me and Video Sun Frontiers, Billy Core signing off.